All right, so in today's video, I'm going over how to play red and green room in the new Outback rework for Rainbow Six Siege. I've already made a video on how to play laundry and piano, as well as a video on how to play party and office. The link to those videos are going to be right here. And the next Tuesday, I'm going to come out with a video on how to play shop and kitchen. Anyways, with all that out the way, enjoy the video. All right, so the first operator on my list is going to be mirror. So the first mirror setup is going to be in closet. So with closet, the first thing you want to do is reinforce the right side of the closet wall. And then you're gonna put a mirror on it. Now the cool thing with the closet wall is if you throw a nitro cell onto this cabinet and you blow it up, and then you put shotgun holes along this wall, you can actually run through this and then just jump on anybody coming through here. Now with my mirror strats, I don't like putting shotgun holes right next to the mirror to shoot them. I kind of just like seeing them and then shooting them through the wall. That way they can't just like see me peek them and then shoot me. Um, but what I do like to do is put holes above the mirror so that one, they can't see me, but two, I can just throw my nitro cell through this hole. Also an important thing to do with your mirror is to reinforce this hatch as it is right above where you're playing. Uh, you don't really have to reinforce it because you still have another mirror to put down, but you can just have somebody else on your team reinforce it and be just as good. That being said, the second place you're going to be playing as Mira is in Laundry, watching into Piano. So the wall that you're going to reinforce is the left side of Laundry Wall, and then you're going to put a mirror on it. Again, depending on where you're playing, it's really good to have a little hole right here, just so that anybody trying to hide behind here or hide behind here while you're contesting them, you can just throw a nitro cell right past there. Also, I have this exact throw and how to do it uh, in my other video where I showed you how to defend laundry and piano. But that being said, why do we have a mirror up here? Well, if you don't want them to have vertical control over B, you want to defend this a little bit because all of this is wooden. So if they wanted to go above, they could easily just shoot out the floors right here and see into objective like this. If you're an attacker pushing from Terrace, which is a really, really common spot to push from, looking at a mirror like this is very intimidating and you're wasting a lot of time on their end playing a mirror right here. So overall, this is really, really good. But other than that, that's pretty much it for mirror. You just wanna have piano control. And personally, if I had to pick one of the two mirrors to play, I'd probably pick this one as it's actually doing a lot more for your team than the other green one is. All right, so the next operator I'm gonna have you play is Cade. So for Cade, you're gonna wanna get this hatch. Um, I tried to see if there was a way that I could make the, the Cade reach this hatch and also reach the reinforced wall for the mirror. You can't do that, sadly. Uh, even if you put the reinforcement on this side and played the mirror on this wall, you still couldn't reach because the wall's too tall and the reinforcement's not at the top of the wall because of that. So, unfortunately, you're gonna have to put it on the hatch. Now, I don't place it on any of these two sides of the hatch because people who are standing right here above you can just easily shoot it once they open up the hatch. Um, so, what you're gonna wanna do is place it over here. Because there's a wall right there on the other side of this hatch, they can't just stand there and shoot it. Never put it on the hatch if they have a maverick on the table because they can easily just maverick the hatch and shoot your cave charge. So putting it right here is your best bet. Although they can shoot open the floor uh, with like a buck or something and maybe shoot it. But if you know that's going to happen, just put it on the metal beam and you have less of a chance of getting shot. Now the second cave charge is actually going to go upstairs in dorms. Um, this is because all of the other walls that are downstairs for the site, you're going to have a bandit on just because bandit's going to be tricking the red wall. So you're going to place your cave upstairs on this wall just so it's easier for your bandit. I like putting my cane charges on the floorboard at least here so that whenever they use like a twitch drone or something they can't easily see it or if they take dorms control they can't find it. This wall being reinforced and electrified again is important because you have this mirror playing right here. Uh, yes they can go from the other stairs or from this window but this just makes it to where they can't buck or sledge open the, the wall and make it a lot faster. This is just for delaying time but that's pretty much it for kid. Alright, so the third operator I have on my list is going to be Bandit. So your first set of Bandit charges are going to go on the red bedroom wall to reptile wall. You're going to want to put your first Bandit charge on the very right side of this left wall. This is just so that attackers have a harder time seeing the Bandit charge, because if you were to put it at this end of the wall, they'd actually see it stick out a little bit and be able to shoot it. Um, and then the same goes for this wall as well, you're going to put it on the very right side. That way if they have a maverick open and they maverick open the wall and they destroy this bandit, they won't be able to see this one if you put it right next to it. The next set of bandits are going to go on this wall. 
So this wall is actually very, very important. It's the main wall that attackers like to push for the site. So what you're going to want to do is actually trick this wall. But you also have to think about how vulnerable this position is whenever you're bandit tricking, because the only place that you can go whenever you leave your bandit tricking spot is this way. And whenever you move this way, you're exposed to this door. So if you don't have anybody playing here, you don't have any roamers, um, I'd actually recommend barricading it. But if you don't want to do that to your teammates, that's understandable. I don't know why people don't do this more, and you really should be doing it with every wall. Punch punch holes into the wall. You can do this from the inside and the outside before you reinforce the wall, but it just makes it easier to hear the hard breach being like placed onto the wall, um, and it makes bandit tricking a lot easier. Everybody should be doing this. I don't know why everybody doesn't do it, but before you reinforce, put punch holes, it makes everything easier to hear. All right, so the next operator we have on this list is going to be Valkyrie. Now, being cohesive with the little hole that people make up here to jump through, I'm going to put a cam behind these chairs right here. Uh, the reason I put them behind these chairs is one, there's not a lot of cover here. It's kind of just a lot of open space. But two, it not only covers this door, but it covers this hallway and the majority of this hallway as well. While also being pretty hidden, especially if you're not on the camera, so it's not highlighted blue. Uh, if you look on the cam, obviously you got the door, so whenever you're sitting here on top of the refrigerator as Valk, you jump through as soon as you see him walk past your cam, and you kill him. The next Valkyrie cam I'm going to place is in the back entrance hallway. Uh, I like to put it in this corner because whenever attackers come through this door, this lip of the bottom of the stairs kind of covers it, and if they're already out here, which is visible enough to see the cam, they're not looking over there, they're looking over here at the doorway. So it sees them, but it also covers this entire hallway, so if you have a deployable shield, uh, which is going to be talked about in the next operator, uh, it actually makes it a lot easier for you to just see him and peep the shield. Uh, so overall, pretty good cam. If you look at it, obviously it gets the doorway and it gets this part, but it also sees a little bit into this double door and it goes onto the east stairs a little bit too. The next cam that I'm going to place is actually upstairs. So I'm gonna put my Valk cam like right here. You can put this pretty much anywhere else But there's just not a lot of places that I could find at least to put this that were really well hidden But also covered a lot of ground and this was kind of the only one that I could find but even then it's still pretty hidden let me know if you have any other Valk cams for this place, because I really couldn't find any. But anyways, if you're Valkyrie and you have a cam up here, it allows you to be below the objective and to see enemies on top of the floor, and then you're able to nitro sell them from below. So let's say I'm on my cam, and I see, oh, there's a guy right here, and then I ping it. You from below can see the ping and immediately nitro them from below and get a free kill. So that's why I put it there, even though we have a mirror facing there, it's just more added pressure to this room because again, the floor is wooden, so you get to play vertical on it. But that's pretty much it for Valk. Okay, so the final operator on my list is going to be Alibi. Now you can change this out for a Wamai, a Jaeger, uh, a Goyo would be better too, but there's a reason that I like to play Alibi on this site. So for one, what I like to do with Alibi a lot is place your things in front of windows. This is just because if they try to shoot through this window at all and peek you, they're gonna get spotted on the cam, so it's just a really good way of utilizing her utility. Uh, another reason I like to put her on windows is if you crack the window, it looks like she's spawn peeking somebody, so you can get free information whenever they shoot the window thinking that you're an actual player and you can just kind of see where they're coming from. That's gonna be your first alibi placement. Your second alibi placement is again gonna be in a window, but it's gonna be over here. Then you're gonna crack the window. This is again another spawn peek that people can use, so uh, they pre-fire the window, you know they're coming from here. The next thing you're going to want to do after you place those two alibi clones is put your deployable shield on this door exactly where I'm standing. Once you've found exactly where I'm standing, which is a little hard to pinpoint, but you're going to be in the middle of the door uh, and on the slanted angle of the rug like this, you're going to put your deployable shield down. And the reason that you have to stand there to put your deployable shield here is one, because it mostly covers the doorway. Not all the way though, but mostly. And two, when attackers come and they see this, and then they clear you out of your deployable shield, they kill you or whatever, they come here and they try to run out the door, and they can't. They just can't go through the door. So unless they have utility to clear this, what they have to do, they have to sit and like figure out how to get around it, which you do by vaulting it over the side which already wastes a lot of time. They have to sit and figure that out for at least probably 20, 30 seconds. Um, unless they already know how to do it, then they know how to do it. But you vault over the side. But what this does is, let's say you put your third alibi clone somewhere like right here. Whenever they hop over the deployable shield and they shoot it, they're sitting here getting spotted. So what that means is if they're sitting here getting spotted and they're in the objective, people are gonna shoot through this wooden wall at them and they can't do anything about it. So the only thing they could do about it is leave the room, but then they'd have to sit and vault the shield. 
So not only does that take time, but it also makes them have to travel in a linear line because when you vault, you travel straight. So it makes them have to have to travel straight instead of going to the left or to the right, which means if they're already shooting at you when you're right here and you travel in a straight line, those bullets are still going to hit you. So that's why I really like that shield. Um, and this is third alibi placement. But I like to put it in the left. You can really put that anywhere you want, but just make sure it's in this room so when they hop over the shield, they're screwed. Uh, and the last thing you can do with alibi, if you have a bailiff, just put a rotate right here. Jesus, I've butchered this rotate. Holy. Anyways, yeah, you have a rotate right here. And the reason I like putting it right here uh, is because it's instead of being exposed to this doorway and this doorway, which it would be from anywhere, you're only exposed to this doorway instead. Because um, if you're on this door and you're holding it, you don't actually see the rotate until you're like holding a pixel. And even then, it's like really hard to see. So that's good. And then if you have an extra reinforcement, you reinforce the wall next to it so they can't sit and wall bang people. So that's pretty much it for Alibi. And just to wrap up the strat, here are all of the reinforcements you're gonna need. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. Don't forget to sub, you can always unsubscribe anytime you want. Follow me on all my other socials down in the description below. And if you like the video, like it. If you just like the video, dislike it. And I'll see you in the next one.